So it's a 2019 F550. Um, yeah, it's been about six months in the making, I guess. Uh, just from kind of ground up from, you know, the tires and all that fun stuff to the camper. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a journey, it's been good. Welcome back to OCN Rigs. We're here with Jake in his custom F550 camper build. Jake, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, man, thanks for coming on. Pretty robust truck market in North America. You went with a Ford. How's the platform been so far? Uh, so far, so good. It can handle all the weight. I've got steel in the back, you know, with flatbeds and everything, and 6.7 engine with the Ford is tried and true. It's one of the best, so that's why I went with it. Awesome, man. Well, let's dive into it. Let's take a look at some of the details of it. Yeah, let's sounds good. So let's talk suspension. Add a lot of weight, let's work ground up. What would you do with the suspension? So right off the bat, uh, one of the reasons why I went with the bigger truck was the fact that it could handle some bigger tires. So I looked, uh, did some research around, uh, found this company out of Texas, uh, DBL Designs out of Hearst, Texas, and they basically do the single wheel conversion. They're taking the dualies off and they're throwing the single wheel on. Uh, they do a military grade tire. So the tires are rated for 7,000 pounds when a normal tire is like 3,000 pounds. So I didn't lose any payload or anything and got to jump up to some pretty beefy tires. Um, and to fit the tires on, uh, it's pretty cool actually. They do a little cutting around the frame, uh, a little cutting around the fenders, and it's only a two and a half inch lift all the way around. So not too big, uh, keeps the truck, you know, not too high where, you know, we're too top heavy or anything like that. But um, from DBL Designs, we've got the fender flares, we've got the tires, uh, we've got the rims here, uh, the block, the suspension in the front, we have sway bars, the block in the back, um, that's pretty much everything. Uh, a speedometer reader as well for to kind of re-regulate the tire speed yeah, and everything. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. So shocks and springs, looks like you got some shock. Fox shocks in there as well? Yeah, that's the 2.0 Fox shocks. Uh, they just kind of come with the package deal that I kind of did. Um, yeah, it's no complaints so far. Everything's, you know, it rides smooth. It rides Best yeah. truck I've ever had. Nice. Yeah. Um, man, this is a heavy duty bumper. I like that it's Linux too. Yeah, so bodyguard bumper. Um, I wanted something beefy. I'm gonna be driving a lot, uh, heading down south. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted something that could handle, you know, just a wear and tear is the difference from, uh, you know, stopping your trip or actually just keep on going. So I went with bodyguard, pretty beefy here. Um, it's got the extra lights here. They're just Napa upgraded lights some spotlight lights. Okay. Uh, right next to the bumper, right next to the fenders, and then right next to the uh, bottom of the body as well uh, on the truck. So uh, something a little more robust once again, something that can handle some wear and tear. Cool. Looks like you have a winch and some D-rings for recovery at front too. Yep, definitely. Um, one of the biggest things uh, I went with a winch is I wanna be 100% self-sufficient out mm -hmm. there. Uh, if I'm stuck in some sand, I can get out. If I'm stuck in some mud, I can get out. So went with the uh, Warren winch. Uh, it's a 12,000 pound winch. Uh, we got snatch blocks and D-rings and all that fun stuff to self-rescue, winch myself out. Uh, hopefully I use them on other people, being a good Samaritan uh, versus, you know, helping myself out a lot. But uh, I've got them and, you know, hopefully I don't need them as much, but yeah, might uh, they'll be useful. Well, uh, let's walk around back, talk about some of the gear on the camper and the flatbed. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. I like this graphic right here. Talk us through that. Uh, yeah, so graphic on the side, pretty unique overall, I would say. It's part of my brother's kind of art that he's been doing. So he kind of picked up a new hobby and he's kind of running with it. And I thought, you know, support him a little bit and throw one of his coolest little pieces on there. So I love flatbeds. I grew up in Texas, whether they're hauling campers or hauling hay, um, love this setup. So talk us through the flatbed. Yeah, definitely. Um, I went with the flatbed overall just for storage purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, I've got the custom boxes here. That's, it's storage for days. I mean, I've got everything in here. One side's pure garage, all tools and everything. And the other side's a little more relaxing, your chairs and awnings and all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, I went with this CM flatbed, uh, big, heavy duty steel. Uh, one of the things I don't have to worry about is payload. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I went with steel. It's just gonna, it's gonna last, it's, uh, it's big, it's beefy. Uh, if somebody runs into me, they're gonna regret it versus you know <laughs> me trying to fix something. Yeah. So yeah, went with this, it's uh, 9.6 uh, feet long. Um, 
With that said, I did have to cut the headache rack off, okay. which is kind of unique in its own way, but I could fit my spare tire up there. I've got my generators up in the front now in between cab and uh, camper. So yeah, basically uh, flatbed's the way to go. It's the only way yeah. I'm gonna have a camper again. Absolutely. Yeah. So recovery gear, we got the Max tracks here. It looks like we got a high lift mount up there as well. Yeah, definitely. So high lift up there comes in super handy. Just a nice little come along, mm -hmm. a little jack to get something un under That's for a uh, little more um, traction. Um, yeah, we got the traction boards here. Uh, They're not Max tracks, uh, but they work just as well. Yeah. Uh, so I've got four of these. I've got two on each side. Uh, and they come in handy, uh, especially on sand. I'm going to be traveling Central America. So yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, I, I want to self rescue. And mm -hmm. if I don't have to pull the winch out and I can throw these under a tire, you know, it's a game changer for the day. For sure. So yeah. let's dive into the camper a little bit. What yeah, brand definitely. is it and some of the equipment along the side here? It looks like we got some Dometic equipment too. Cool. Yeah. So it's a Travel Light 800X. Um, it's kind of one of the lightest, biggest campers that I could find. Uh, once again, it was due to payload issues and I wanted to find something uh, for my old truck uh, that had a 2,000 pound payload. Okay. Uh, now this one has a 15 or a 1,300 pound payload. So something basically that I didn't have to worry about payload. So this travel light has been good to us so far no leaks no nothing uh it's nice and roomy on the inside for uh, my girlfriend and i um but yeah we basically have here we have the back of the fridge uh access that uh propane it's a three-way fridge so you got your ac dc and propane uh we got water hookups here so we've got our main uh, water fill for our uh, water tank, which is 22 gallons. And then we have our city here. Um, along with that, we've got our shore power, uh, which can come in handy. I am fully self-sufficient with solar up on top. Uh, so don't really need the shore power at all, but yeah. it comes in handy. Nice to have. Uh, yep. Uh, cable hookup for TVs. Uh, we've got our water heater back here. Uh, self light that one back here. Uh, this is furnace here, which is just an exhaust there. Uh, outdoor shower, which is going to come in Big very, time. very handy. Yeah. Um, and then up there, we've got some lithium batteries. And the last one, we kind of moved some things around. That was the propane area. Now we've got two lithium batteries, uh, inverter there, uh, 200 amp hours, all that fun stuff. Cool, man. Well, yeah. let's head to the back. Let's take a peek inside. This space is awesome. Plenty of room in here. Talk us through some of the components of it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, very comfortable living. It's, yeah. you know, all the amenities of your home basically into a small little area. But uh, for my girlfriend and I, it, it works out. Um, winters can be challenging. We've kind of learned the pros and cons of camping in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, we have got some insulation for the windows that really helps out. Um, you know, if furnace running off of propane really helps. We've got two propane tanks that, you know, can power us through some of the biggest storms. But we were camping, it was negative 23 recently, and we were camping. It was a little chilly at night, but, you know, with the dogs warm, warm heat and everything, uh, we, we ended up being just fine. But yeah, it's, it, it's really comfortable. Cool. Uh, you know, from the sink, from doing dishes. Uh, we don't have a stove, but we do have a stove top. So okay. a two burner stove top Sweet. that really, I mean, we can basically cook anything we want in here. Uh, with the addition of that, we added a grill outside. So, you know, having the grill outside can really help out just cooking and, you know, just cleaning and, and spacing things out. Um, but, you know, it's, it is a tight area mm -hmm. and you just kind of take turns in the kitchen. You know, yeah. if, if somebody needs a beer in the fridge, you yeah. know, somebody can grab you the beer. You don't have to get up to get it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so when you're getting off the grid and this saying, how much food or drink do you tend to bring before it's like, hey, time to reload? Our plan is the, the longest we've been in the camper, just self-sufficient is about five days. Mm -hmm. So packing food for that wasn't a problem. And we're thinking we could push it a little bit more and probably do like seven days. Uh, with the solar, uh, we've got a jerry can uh, water filter. Mm -hmm. So with, you know, clean water and the size of our fridge, which is yeah. pretty good for the size of the camper, That's big. Um, we should be able to do about seven days and, and be comfortable. Plenty of room for cold beers. Ice yeah. Cold, ice cold memories. Yeah, yeah. So Jake, thanks for showing us the truck. This thing's awesome. Um, where are you going to be taking it? Uh, the next step is April 1st, we're going to be taking off and hitting Mexico down to Central America. 
Um, no plan on return yet. Uh, we're thinking a year or two, and if travels are going well, we might do a little bit more. But uh, yeah, if you want to give us a follow at Flatbed Around Earth, um, that's definitely uh, the best way to follow us for now. Uh, there might be some other fun stuff uh, in the works, definitely. But um, yeah, the Instagram account, that's where we're at. Cool. Guys, check them out. You heard them. Flatbed, Round Earth. Check us out at OCM Rigs. Ask any questions below. We'll see you all next time.